Hey guys, thanks for stopping back again. This is All Things Chess with Cybertown. I'm Cybertown. Um, we're going to continue our examination of looking how to combat isolated pawns. Uh, this example is a fairly notorious uh, endgame, and it might surprise you a little bit that we're going to be looking at a draw. Um, in the end, a white, it plays against the isolated pawn here. This is Salo Floor, um, very underrated player from the 20s and 30s. Um, I think the Soviet Union weren't so aggressive in pushing um, Mikhail Botvinnik. Salo Floor could have easily been one of the leading players in the fight for the world title. Um, but that's the way history ended up. And of course, black is uh, Capablanca, who's uh, one of the first world champions who beat Lasker for the title in 1921. Of course, he's a legendary figure in chess. Legendary for his positional play and legendary for his endgame technique. So in this particular game, we see uh, White getting more or less exactly what you want again against an isolated pawn. He stamps down Black's activity. He trades off some pieces. He gets to an endgame against the isolated pawn. Um, but we see Capablanca with some legendary endgame technique, and he makes defending this endgame look virtually effortless. But I really don't think it is effortless, because his play just sort of covers up how difficult these sorts of endgames are for the side with the isolated pawn. Uh, but we'll dive right into it. Sail of Floor is white here. Uh, D4, D5, C4, E6. And this is just standard Queen's Gambit decline stuff, of course. There should be seven. Queen C2. Um, we've gone over this in another video, but just a brief opening primer. I think Queen C2 is probably white's most... Not necessarily accurate, but most aggressive response here. Um, the two other responses... Bishop d3, we looked at um, in the Botvinnik Vidmar game when we were looking at how to play with the isolated pawn. I think that's probably White's least accurate response because it, it immediately loses the battle for the tempo. So, in this position, the battle for the tempo is if White plays, if White moves his light squared bishop, Black immediately takes on c4, and that forces White to lose a tempo. So, in position, this position and positions like it, a lot of the times, white will be finding moves to play to avoid moving his light squared bishop. So, uh, queen c2, another move is rook c1 here. That's fairly popular. Uh, bishop d3 immediately loses that uh, battle for the tempo. And I think black is perfectly fine here. Uh, but the game choice, it's probably the most aggressive option. It keeps the light squared bishop at home so it doesn't lose that tempo. It keeps the positioning of the queen, uh, white's queen rook flexible so it can still hop to d1 if necessary. Um, the downside is, and this is what Capablanca plays in the game, it's sort of the principal move. Um, if the C-file opens up, it could be that the white queen is forced to lose uh, time again. Um, in my opinion, that's a, that's a trade-off worth it for whites, but just chess is a series of trade-offs, more or less. Uh, so C5, that is the principal move. It does saddle black with the isolated pawn. So CD, knight takes... Queen takes, um, I mean, theoretically, knight can take, but this is extraordinarily passive. And after something like bishop d3, uh, white's much better here. This is just a vastly superior position for white. That knight just doesn't belong in a7. So, uh, queen takes e7. Um, so, we're going to be heading for an isolated pawn position here, more or less, with a few deviations. Uh, and this is more or less pretty happy for white. Uh, he's managed to trade off two sets of minor pieces when you're going against an isolated pawn. One of your goals is to eliminate uh, minor pieces, including and especially the bishop that's opposite the color of the isolated pawn. So black's dark square bishop, if you had an isolated pawn, that's a very important piece, because that's his that's a big, his aggressive piece for attacking the king's side. Without that dark square bishop on the board, a lot of black's dynamism is sapped from the position. So white's very happy to have gotten those off the board. Um, black's remaining bishop is the poor one. And white still has his light squared bishop, which is his good bishop in the structure. So, uh, so far positionally, this is exactly what white white wants. This is exactly what you want to get going against the isolated pawn. So bishop d3, king h7. Um, Capablanca goes straight for the isolated pawn. I'm not sure that's the best choice, but he he was very confident in his uh, endgame technique, apparently, which he's Capablanca, so he certainly should be. Um, two different options here. One has absolutely no theory on it, and it's just something that I saw Stockfish 13 looking at, uh, which computers are hilarious, because they're 3200 rated. Um, H6 is sort of the 
the human move, and it sort of keeps the tension. Uh, just a quick line. You see... 96, and this is standard for nice light of pawn. The white establishes his knight on the d4 square, and the knight hops to e6 to immediately challenge it. Um, this is nominally better for whites, uh, but it certainly is still a little bit better for whites. Uh, but this is just a standard normal isolate queen pawn uh, battle. This is how you try to neutralize uh, the attack against the isolated pawn by getting rid of that strong knight on d4. The other option... C4. Um, yeah, that is a heck of a move. Um, download Stockfish 13 and let it run for a few minutes. Uh, the main line that it gives... And Stockfish claims that this is dead equal, 0, 0.00. Um... It could be, and, and this is why computers have sort of changed the face of modern chess, because previously, um, no leading, like, if you go back to the 90s or the 80s, no leading player would play this way as black. You know, they would just see black being down a pawn and not even go from there. Uh, computers have really, er, sort of made a lot of opening lines viable and sort of opened our eyes how flexible and inexhaustible the game of chess really is, still is, that... The idea that computers are adding to the death of chess is just nonsense. In my opinion, it's enriched chess immeasurably. It's made so many openings and variations viable. Um, but yeah, Stockfish13 says this is equal. I sort of believe it. Uh, the bishop on f5 is a very strong piece. It's certainly better than the knight on f3. Black can play f6 to take away the only natural outpost square for the knight. As long as black main maintains control of e4... Uh, white's extra pawn really won't be felt, and black has a completely viable pawn majority they can get moving. You just play b5, a5, b4, and just start marching down the board. Um, is it full compensation? I mean, I'm 2400 and Stockfish is 3200, so my qualifications for disagreeing with Stockfish are pretty poor. Um, but I, I sort of think it could be full compensation, but it's, it's a fascinating position. There were no games in my database for that play, which is completely understandable, because it looks like it's just dropping a pawn. Um, but, interesting line, just an aside. Uh, Capablanca takes him d4, knight takes, queen b4, knight c5, this is sort of a nice little trick. It saves a move by getting the knight to e6 a little bit sooner, or eliminating white, uh, white square bishop. Bishop b5, uh, of course, taking him b4 is uh, sadness for white. Uh, so, bishop b5, and black just goes straight for the ending. So um, there are very few uh, variations in this game, just because it's straightforward positional play. Uh, but let's evaluate this position. So white has more or less everything you dream of going against an isolated pawn. So we've got the queens off the board. We've got two sets of minor pieces off the board. Uh, white has an edge in mobilization. You know, all of black's pieces are still home. Uh, white has one, two, and don't forget the king. He has three pieces to develop. In an endgame, never forget your king if you take one thing from this video. You should take a lot more, of course, but uh, always keep your king active in endgames. Once the queens and some minor pieces are off, that's your cue to get your uh, king into the thick bits. Um, basically, this is a dream position for white. You know, He's got his knight on d4. That's exactly what you aim for. Uh, black's remaining bishop is his bad bishop, and white can mobilize is on the c-file. So the fact that Capablanca ended up drawing this without really any clear errors from floor, um, for practical play, shouldn't take away from White's position here. If you get this position in your games, you're going to win a bunch of games from this position, just practically. Um, if you're playing Capablanca, you won't win, but you're not going to be playing Capablanca. This is exactly what you want to get going against an isolated pawn. So this is a dream position, but it takes filigree perfect defensive technique to make it look like an easy draw, which it is not an easy draw. Uh, bishop e6, challenge for the c-file. Uh, rook c2, if there's one move I disagree with, it would be this one. Um, f3 seems a little bit more productive. Basically, the, this is the principle of two weaknesses. If anyone has never read Mark Dvoretsky, which is essential reading if you want to improve at chess, uh, the principle of two weaknesses is that 
one weakness isn't enough to win a game. So the weakness on d5 isn't enough. White wants to expand on the king side and force another weakness into being um, and try to stretch uh, black's defensive trenches beyond their limits. Um, so f3 prepares moves like g4, h4, just getting the king side pawns moving down the board. Uh, in these sorts of positions where white can squeeze without any penalty, grab space where you can. Um, so that, that would be my one quibble with the game. Knight takes f8, king d2. And again, there's precious few variations here just because this is very uh, open ended play. White, sh um, I won't. This would be another move that I sort of disagree with. I don't think white should be trading his rooks off. I think f3, again, you want to expand on the king side. I would leave that rook where it is uh, just to help potentially support a king side pawn push from black. Um, that would be, there would be two moves that I quote with, and they're each, uh, rook trades. Um, generally going against the isolated pawn, you also want to keep major pieces on the board, so I would at least keep this one rook on the board, if not having kept both of them on the board earlier. Um, but Floor chooses to trade straight off, which I think is an error, eventually, because we see that the minor piece end does end up drawing. King d6, king c3. B6, this is a star move. Um, this displays how much of an endgame genius Capablanca was. Um, when you have a bishop in an endgame, you want to try to uh, generally place your p uh, pawns on the opposite color of your bishop, because it controls squares that your bishop can't. So he's going to try to put his pawns on dark squares. Um, he also wants to cover the penetration squares. So eventually the white king will end up on d4, so black wants to cover c5, and e5. So he's going to very naturally arrange his pawns to cover those two penetration squares. So b6, just a star move from Capablanca. f4, exactly what you want to do. You want to get your kingside pawn, pawns moving. Um, maybe f3 was potentially a better way to do it, because as it ends up in the game, um, the uh, white kingside pawns end up a little bit inflexible. Um, so maybe f3 was a little bit better to prepare g4 first. Uh, but f4, bishop d7, covering the b5 square to prepare other moves. Now to 3, f6. So this is exactly continuing the plan that Capablanca had. Uh, covers the penetration square in e5, also in g5, so the knight can't hop in and massage the kingside squares. Uh, king d4, a5. Capablanca is making the, uh, this look easy. Your opponents will not play this well. Practically, the position that White got for this ending is a great position. You'll win your share of them. But if you're playing against Capablanca, this is a sort of endgame technique that he had. He's just making it look easy. He's putting his pawns on dark squares to control the squares that his bishop can't, and his bishop controls the other penetration squares around d5. So, genius play from Capablanca. Knight d2. We'll just go through these. This is sort of straightforward maneuvering. King c6 covers b5. H6 continues putting his uh, pawns on dark squares. H5, I remember the uh, books that I looked at as a kid uh, saying this was a dire error. Um, when you look at it with the engines, it really isn't. Um, that's another thing engines have changed. It's shown how wide the drawing margin is in most chess games. That um, what someone thought was a decisive mistake actually was much farther along in the game. But h5 is still perfectly fine. b4, king d6, b5. Trying to mobilize the b6 as, uh, pawn as a target. g6, trying to keep the squares on the king side sort of clogged up. Repeating moves. f5. So this is, a, this is an excellent pra practical try. Um, this is still well within the drawing margin for black. Um, but this is a great try from white, just practically. This isn't really a pawn sacrifice, because after GF, black's extra pawn um, is doubled and isolated, so this really doesn't win material for black. But it's an excellent try from white to try to break through. Uh, this is exactly what you want to do with the knight. The squares like F4 are exactly what you want to aim for for your knight. It's an untouchable outpost square hitting both those weak pawns. But Capablanca has everything well in hand. Bishop D7... Bishop e8, just in time to hold the e8, h5 pawn. And now he takes on b5 when it's safe. So, even in this position with reduced material, there's still quite a bit of pressure here for white. Uh, just Capablanca does an amazing job of covering everything.
So bishop c6, c4, and bishop b5. So this is superb technique. I, I will include the game in my notes as usual. Um, look at each point in this last sequence, how Capablanca uses his bishop to corral the white knight. The white knight is ultimately aiming for f4. At every point, Capablanca accurately uses his bishop to cover up um, the squares that white could use to get to f4. This is just superb technique. So knight e1, bishop e2. So attacking the knight, forcing you to choose where it'll go, and then a knight f2, bishop f1, covering both d3 and h3. So now the white knight can't get to f4. Uh, Floor just decides to give up. King d5. King d5. And they agree to a draw here. Really the critical uh, point here is that black needs to play that. Because on that, he wants to be able to play king e5. Um, but that's really the only critical parts. Uh, this is just a dead draw. Um, so yeah, let the, don't let this draw discourage you. Um, if you get this sort of position as white against an isolated pawn, you're going to win more than your share. This is a dream position for white. Um, I think Floor did a couple of things, maybe suboptimally. I think he traded his rooks too easily. Uh, generally, when you're fighting the isolated pawn, you want to keep as many rooks on the board as possible. Uh, so you can just put them on the d-file and sort of bombard the pawn. But even beyond that, it took filigree perfect defensive technique from Capablanca. You know, those, the b6 move, the f6 move, a5, covering all those dark squares. It took perfect technique from Capablanca to hold this position. Um, if it takes perfect technique to hold a position, that means white's position was pretty darn good to begin with. Um, so it was... Chess in general is within the drawing margin, but if you can get a comfortable position with, a position with some positional advantages to squeeze, you're going to win more than your share. So um, I'll include in the notes, take a look at the position that White got. It is a very comfortable endgame position. It's exactly what, what you want to go for when you're fighting against an isolated pawn. So a uh, quick video today. This is just sort of a classic endgame that you need to have on board. Uh, whether or not you play with an isolated pawn, it's just a classic performance from Capablanca. Um, Next video tomorrow, we'll be examining uh, someone actually beating the ice of the pawn with more direct methods of taking advantage of that weakness. So, uh, my name is John. I'll see you later.